This is Dateline Sunday, October 13th, 2002. From our studios in New York, here is Stone Phillips. Good evening. Insurance, we buy it for peace of mind, to cover our homes, our health, our lives. And millions of Americans have disability insurance to help replace lost income in case of a serious illness or injury. If you can't work, those benefits may be crucial for you and your family. But what if suddenly, unexpectedly, your benefits were cut off? That's what happened to the people in our first story. Tonight, some startling charges against the biggest disability insurance provider in the country. Here's John Larson with the Dateline Investigation. It began on this stretch of Interstate 40 in Albuquerque, New Mexico in February of 1998. A car salesman swerves to avoid some rocks and the world suddenly turns upside down. The nurses and all the physicians there were saying, uh, do you have any feeling, what, can you move your legs? And, and I kept telling them I can't feel any from the chest down. The accident had severed John Montano's spinal cord. Although he was spared some limited use of his arms, he's considered a quadriplegic, paralyzed for life. And what lay ahead could hardly have looked worse. Unable to work or support his family, Montano faced losing everything. But like millions of Americans, he had prepared for just such a disaster. He had paid $59 a month for disability insurance, which promised if he was ever too sick or too injured to keep working, it would help replace his lost income. The checks began arriving as promised, but after two years he got a shocking letter. His disability benefits were being cut off. I was scared, I was uh, frightened, I go, well, that there's got to be a mistake. But there was no mistake. Montano's insurance company had decided that, despite his paralysis, he no longer deserved benefits. So what was going on? Sources tell Dateline that what happened to John Montano may have been part of something much larger. Tonight, a Dateline investigation into whether the largest disability carrier in the United States, Unum Provident, launched a company-wide effort to cut costs aggressively, and in the process, unfairly denied benefits selling out people it promised to protect. They just basically cut me off and that was it. In Montano's case, Unum Provident claimed to have good reason. It said it had surveillance tape, that Montano had improved immensely, and he should go back to work selling cars. Was there any way that John was faking his quadriplegia? Absolutely not. There's no way. Dr. Jonathan Berg is Montano's doctor. This is the area of his, uh, basically the area of his paralysis. He says the records are clear. Montano is a quadriplegic. Did you tell the company, look it, I'll take any test you want me to take? Yes. And so did they do that? Did they evaluate you? No, they, I didn't hear back from them. The disability and life insurance industry says it faces one and a half billion dollars in fraudulent claims every year. So you can understand why it might investigate Montano's claim. But when Unum Provident finally shared its surveillance tape, Dr. Berg says it showed nothing new. Just John Montano driving his specially equipped van, demonstrating what everyone already knew. Montano had a limited use of his upper arms. In a letter to Unum Provident, Dr. Berg stated, by all standards, this man is completely and totally disabled. Meanwhile, his benefits cut off, Montano spiraled towards bankruptcy. His wife had divorced him after the accident. Now, faced with losing his home and his children, he says he became suicidal. Sounds like it was pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. So how could something like this happen? These people say they know. They have to literally fight to get their benefits. These three former Unum Provident employees tell a disturbing story of a company obsessed with finding excuses to cut off benefits. Did you feel pressure to deny claims? Absolutely. They asked Dateline to conceal their identities because they're afraid of reprisals. Find ways to close a claim. Just look so very carefully to find anything that will disqualify them from claim. They even gave incentives. 
Incentives how? Incentives for um, closing claims. If we projected that we're going to close 30, if we get to 30, we'll have a pizza party or we'll have an ice cream party. Would the company pressure employees to terminate claims? Financial reports show that in 1993, the company was losing millions. Then came new management and a complete reversal. It began making millions. How did they do it? Unum Providence says by restructuring and making smart business decisions. But internal documents suggest the company had a new game plan to help it deny as many claims as it could. Would you raise your right hand, please? This man, Dr. William Feast, was one of Providence's two staff physicians when new management took over in 1993. He left the company two years later. Here, in a deposition, he describes under oath how the company changed. There was no concern for the individual. It was just bottom line. If we can terminate this file, we're going to do it. Dr. Feast says the company first began targeting the policyholders who were costing the company the most money at meetings called roundtables. The object of the roundtable was to cut off the high dollar claims. Unum Provident urged Dateline not to believe Dr. Feast, uh, saying his knowledge of the company is outdated and that he has twice signed affidavits which included false information. Dr. Feast says they were simple mistakes. And remember, Dr. Feast is not the only one speaking out. It, it became a witch hunt. These people say they encountered similar roundtables years later. It was all looking for loopholes to close the claim. And if you can't do it, we'll have a team of experts here to figure out how you can. It was mandatory. Even if you didn't have a claim, you better find one. They say most vulnerable were policyholders with so-called subjective illnesses. Illnesses that don't show up on x-rays or MRIs, like mental illness, chronic pain, migraines, or even Parkinson's. So they're fatigued. Prove it. You know, so they got achy joints. Prove it. Why can't they work? And if they can't prove it? They're out of there. Denied. Denied. And they are not the only ones saying this. In all, 10 Unum Provident employees agreed to speak with Dateline, but only if we promise not to reveal their names. We can tell you this about them. Their jobs range from claim representatives all the way up to vice presidents. Some left the company on their own, some were fired, and some still work at Unum Provident. But all have described the same atmosphere, one of intense pressure coming from management down to employees, pressure to cut off benefits to policyholders. Dateline also searched thousands of pages of internal corporate documents and court records and found evidence that appears to back up what they say. This is a series of internal monthly reports that show company savings seem to be growing, the result of cutting claims. Terminated claims have reached a record level. And we found evidence that suggests the company set goals for cutting claims, deciding ahead of time how many claims should be denied. Like this 1995 top-level memo, it spells out a company-wide goal to terminate $132 million in claims. Here, an internal email from last year alerting a group of adjusters they have one week to close 18 more claims to meet our projections. These people say if they didn't meet their projections, they'd have what they called fire drills, intensive efforts to find claims to close. The image is a fire drill, a bell goes off, everybody rallies to a cause. What was the cause? The cause was looking for opportunities to close a file.